Welcome to The Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. With your hosts, Dan Green and Eric Stewart. Welcome to The Heart of the Cards. I'm joined by my wonderful friend, Eric Stewart, who's a talented actor, director, in my opinion, a producer as well. And he sings in the Eric Stewart band as well as writes all their music. And Eric, how long has that band been around? Uh, We were actually uh, hired to do the song for Fire and the Wheel when they first came out. So it's been a long time. Oh my God. (laughs) That's, that's... I bet the social media was not so great, though. At that no, stage. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Twitter was actual birds back then. I oh, guess. yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chiseling away at a stone when you needed to write a letter. <laughs> and I, of course, am joined by my dear friend, Dan Green, talented voice actor, director, writer, artist. That's right. Artist. And uh, <laughs> and also I've heard a, a fantastic cook. I'm going to say that every time until you cook me a meal. <laughs> that's your go I've that's... only I've only heard I've only heard, you know, the, or read the reviews from your children. Yeah. Um, but I have you by my children. But I have not experienced it yet. And the next convention we're going to, we're going to have to sit down, uh, even if it's a microwave <laughs> and we're going to have to have a meal cooked by Dan Green. <laughs> OK, hey, I'm there for it. Um, if you like warmed up chicken nuggets and French fries, I'm your man. That is my I'm go-to. Kidding. Actually, I have a chicken in the pot today. <laughs> some potatoes and some onions. So, oh, that sounds that's, like a country song. Yeah, you know when you slow cook it, it like fills up the house with that nice ah, home cooked aroma. I do. Yeah. My mother would do that with her yeah. chicken soup. It would it would smell. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh pff, yeah. There sure, you it's go. Perfect for yeah, that. it's great yeah. for soups. Yeah. You did, um, I didn't realize we were doing a cooking show, but there you go. A little, a little behind the scenes <laughs> new, it's her with new Dan track. and Eric. <laughs> right. Yeah. We finished up with the hero's journey. Right. Now we have a different focus. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> the hero's meal. <laughs> so that that might be a a, a thing for tips and tricks yes, to, to yes. cover. I agree. Um, so what we are doing today is following through with the next step on the hero's journey after having had a wonderful episode where we got a chance to talk to our friend. Veronica Taylor, yes. about things that are within the realm of this discussion of the hero's journey. And and I think one of the most useful things about that is its universal resonance. Everybody gets it on a basic level, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. And today we are talking about what is termed the temptress. Oh. This really doesn't have anything to do with women in particular. The gender is irrelevant. But the idea is that the hero will encounter another challenge to their quest, and that is the the temptation of pleasure, the temptation of things that anybody would enjoy having as a part of their lives that can divert them from the focus of their quest, what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And I know that I have very commonplace examples of that in my own life, um, but that's, that's the scope. It doesn't mean that the hero, if they are sidetracked, that the hero has failed, necessarily, mm-hmm. although some heroes do feel that way. Uh, so it's a, it's a common thing that we, we find ourselves having to <laughs> struggle with over, I think, the right. course of our adventure, if we can call it that. So, uh, but for myself, I wanted to, for myself, I wanted to put it in the context of my real life. And in the last several years, I have created a few things that I'm not finished with, but I'm very... Uh, happy with the progress that's been made and what it has become so far, and that's Crossing the Gods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know this sounds like an imaginary project to <laughs> the people that may be no, I've seen talk it. about I've, it. I've seen it in the works. <laughs> I've worked on it. <laughs> it's real. It's not a unicorn. Um, and that is probably one of the most comprehensive, creatively challenging things I've ever attempted. Mm-hmm. It played on all of the ranges of what I like to do creatively, acting, directing, writing, illustrating. I love working with sound, so the sound design stuff matters to me too. I have been creating videos since I was a teenager, so creating video itself, which is also a combination of image and sound, has always been really compelling to me. And I have so enjoyed the process of doing that. That said, it's very isolating. Mm Mm-hmm. And to make a lot of progress in a short period of time means the isolation increases. Being the father of two children, I 
am advantaged by their imperative, their need. <laughs> I can't just be sucked down a hole because of them. Thank God they keep me rooted in the real world to right. some extent, you know. Uh, and that really helps. But I have been through stretches of time, like weeks or months, where I have to remind myself, Dan, call somebody on the phone and just have like a conversation, not about work, yeah. not about something that needs to get done or what have you. And because I could very easily just talk to my kids and communicate, not even directly, you know, through text or email or what have you with the people that I work with. And that's pretty isolating. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also a tremendous reward that's come from that. So I don't look back over that stretch where I felt like that concentration was, 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 it was too much. But I look back on that and I think I climbed that far up the hill. As an independent production company, Andromeda greatly benefits from the support of its audience. If you're able to contribute as little as a dollar a month, consider going to our Patreon page. Any support you can give means a lot to us creators, and we're excited to bring you more. Visit AndromedaProductions.com and see what's in store. If this is content you enjoy, please like, subscribe, and share on YouTube. And I've learned now how to better balance these these common temptations. Uh, I love to play video games. I haven't played a video game th thoroughly in over a year or so. Mm. Be because I, feel, I would feel guilty. I feel like I'm giving into the tempt, right. the temptation of it. I'm not going to use the gender. Right. The temptation of it. Um, and obviously, anybody who does play video games, I think I'm superior to, and I think that they're slackers. I'm kidding. Well, that's I'm true. Joking. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but I guess I'm also delineating a difference between necessary human contact, like isolation to an extreme, where you're really neglecting necessary things, and then there's a range to where. You really just, you'd rather screw off on a certain day sure. and not do anything. I mean, one of my favorite things to do is, especially this time of year where it's colder, have a reason to comfortably have a comforter over me in my bed and watching whatever on my screen that I want to. Yep. I could totally kill an afternoon that way. Yeah. Well, you're also allowed to do that. <laughs> you're allowed to do that. There's, I, I don't know if I would that's necessarily true. say that that's a bad temptation sometimes to do that. I mean, we, we need the, right. we, we the downtime to recharge as well, you know? That's true. That's true. And I think people, I was about to use the phrase like us. I don't mean that in any exclusionary way, but we, we celebrate life. Mm-hmm. We we are we we are passionate people mm -hmm. in the way that we express things and and it is it, it is fun, and, but it also gives you know relevance to it. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So you consider you consider those um, distractions your your temptress. Sometimes they are right distractions. They aren't. We were just talking about giving yourself things socially that are good for you. Right. right. This is the the other side is I also do give in to that temptation of yeah, just distractions that I don't really get anything out of. Right. Sometimes when I'm distracting myself with them, I can feel my consciousness knocking on my door saying, Hey, mm -hmm. you know, this is really just BS. Let's yeah. get out of here. <laughs> no, that's that is that is it's it's interesting. I would not have thought of that, but of course you make me think about my own. Um and uh <laughs> and I I think that I I use the procrastination. Uh, um, that's my that's mm. my temptress. Is that yes? As, as, I, as, I, I'm guilty of that too. Yeah, as as someone who knows me as well as you do, um, I'm always doing something. I'm always doing something. And um, to find the time to take that to find that downtime, you know, yeah, I'm a gamer. You know that I'm a, I'm a video gamer. Most of the time, I do that so that I can shut down my brain a little bit because I'm over right. overthinking everything in the world. Um, but which is funny because for people who are listening, playing a game with Eric, his brain is not shut down. He's <laughs> hyper focused. Thank you. I appreciate usually it. because he's playing a sniper. <laughs> Well, yes, yes, I, I definitely, I enjoy, I enjoy my, my, my gaming. Um, but, uh, even just the other day, I, uh, 
I've been I've been doing a lot of organizing. That's another thing that I do. Okay. That's another thing that I do for therapy. Um, I oh. I have collected way too much stuff. I I um um. I wouldn't say I'm a, a pack rat, but I, I just have too many things. I have a hard time getting rid of things. Uh, probably goes back to the source of me not wanting to, you know, um, get rid of people too, right? You know, we talked about right, that in an right. early episode. Like, I just, I keep things around. They're all part, they all have a story. They all have memories. And I, and I, and right. Um, yeah. Uh, I even, I was talking to a musician the other day and we were talking about guitars and I said, I have a pretty decent collection of guitars. And, and he said, yeah, you know, I've got to sell this one because I want to buy a different one. And I said, you know, I, in the in the years I've been playing, which um, probably, you know, 40 years, um, I have only sold one guitar in my life that I owned. And it's because not that I play them all and not that they're all worth a lot of money, but they all have some sort of story. I mean, it might be my own story, but I just don't want to part <laughs> with them. So I use a lot of. Okay, I'm going to clean this. I'm going to organize the cables in my studio. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? I'm going to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yesterday while I was uh, um, uh, exercising on my on my bike, I decided that the cabinet that's underneath my television that's a, it's a it's a it's a it's three different cabinets, and it contains my vintage video games, all my DVDs, everything like that. I opened all the doors so that during my one hour ride. They would be staring at me, this the the mess that was in there, <laughs> so that I could contemplate the best way to organize and get rid of stuff. Now, this sounds very OCD, but really what it is, is it's me procrastinating about the other things that I should be working on. Yes, I need to organize my house. And yes, oh, yeah. I need to, to come up with a, a more streamlined way to find things, because I will tell you that I now have... Um, three containers of, of, of salt in my cabinet because I keep buying a new one, not knowing where the other one is. Right. Um, it, it's like if I, and now I will not buy another, uh, RCA cable audio cable because I have about 400 of them organized in my studio. Um, but, but I, I find that that's my temptress. You know, you're off the track when you're organizing. Stuff when like I'm that. doing stuff like that, yeah. even though that is on the list of things to do, it is taking me away from the things that I should be doing. And when I say should, right. I'm talking about the the creative stuff. Um, I'm working on two yeah. songs right now, and it's frustrating because I haven't found the the lyric that I'm looking for. And it, in that frustration, I go, well, then I'm just going to organize a cabinet. Like, yes, maybe I right. need to do that to clear my head. But I find that I'm doing that um, to avoid uh, sitting right. down and focusing. And right. yes, uh, doing DIY projects. And, you know, I just built this cute little pergola in my backyard. It's fantastic. Um, and that's great. I love that I did that. But these are things that I'm because I'm not I'm not finding the focus and the energy and the creativity for the things that I really want to be working on. I don't want to sit around twiddling my thumbs. Right. I need to find something to do so that I feel like I'm still doing something, even though I don't think I'm doing what I should be doing enough of right. the time. Right, right. That completely makes sense. So that's been, you know, and it's it's productive, but I am not a carpenter and I am not a home organizer. I am a, an actor and I am a musician. And these are the things that... I want to be doing because I'm much, I'm also much prouder of the, of the final, <laughs> even the process, but also the final product of that more than I am. Hey man, do you want to see how organized the, the storage co uh, containers are in my studio that contains all of my cabling? You know what I mean? Of course. Of course. Yeah. It's on a different order of accomplishment yes. entirely. Yes. So not so much a person, so... but much more of things to fill my time. Right. Right. And at least some people listening might be thinking, you know, you do something that is productive and it does help your life. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're doing terrible things to a cat with a fork. No. To quote Steve Martin. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> he said it, folks. Yeah, I, I he don't said take it. any responsibility Dan for did that not idea. say it. And I also, though, completely understand that mental space you're in. I get a lot of illustrating done sometimes when I'm avoiding the audio book that I don't want to record. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I, I, I get it. I, I do get it. Um, and that's, and that's the other thing is that it's very hard to, 
turn on your creativity, like to schedule. It doesn't work like to that. To schedule your creativity. I mean, here in Nashville, um, it's very common to uh, schedule co-writes with people at a certain time. You'll say, hey, let's get together at 10 o'clock in the morning, sit down and write a song together. And uh, I don't, I, I mean, I don't do a lot of co-writing, um, but one of the reasons I don't do a lot I of don't co-writing do any. Is, is because I can't imagine like it, that's not how my brain works. My the, right. the the ideas that come to me and when they come to me are so random. Um, it's a good yeah, thing yeah. I have a phone to jot notes down or quickly sing a little melody line that comes to me. Or you know, I keep my phone near my shower, you know, so that right. so like I can immediately just push record and and sing something that I that I've been working on, you know, while I was in there. It's like so to say, all right, at ten o'clock. For the next two hours, we're gonna write a great song. Yeah, I don't think so. So I can only imagine with your <laughs> with your drawing and of course with the writing, your your creative writing, um, when these ideas come to you, yes, you should be disciplined. You could say, I'm setting a t- right. aside this time to work on stuff. And if it doesn't happen, then you could do something else right. during that time. Um, but yeah, I uh, I don't understand the the structured creativity. It's funny to me that you mentioned the writing. Uh, in this context of procrastination, a uh, little over a year ago, I wrote a short story I shared with you. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of that was based on not doing some other things. And I remember as I was getting caught up in this short story, um, I titled The Cure for Grief. Mm-hmm. And But it's kind of like, a, it's, a, it's a sci-fi thing and it, it, it operates more like a suspense story, I guess, on certain levels. Anyway, um, and I was doing that with passion and vigor, and it was really occupying my total focus. And I remember a whole day went by where all I was doing was working on it, and that day just flew mm-hmm. past, which is sometimes a signifier of just how much you're getting out of the involvement. Exactly. Yep. And that, I guess, is an odd example in this conversation about temptation because that was a worthy mistress, if you will, Mm-hmm. Uh, but the work, I guess it depends on how you look at it because the work that I was avoiding doing while technically a part of my career wasn't fulfilling the quest of doing creative work that's gratifying. And that is a part of our responsibility to our, ourselves as artists, right? True. Very true. To challenge ourselves in that way. So I don't know. Um, so I provide I, I muddy up the waters with that example, I guess. But, no, no, but um, I think that's valid too. That is valid. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you're talking about two people who um, do many different things for their creative right. outlet, for their creative outlet, and so um, it's. I guess it's kind of hard to hear what we're saying as. Well, I should be doing this creative thing, and I decided to go off on this tangent and do this to, to you know, as a, uh, you know, to fill my time, and then I'm going to come back to that other thing. But it, m- many people might not think that's a, that's necessarily a, a negative, and I don't, I don't, right, I right. don't think that, of that it that as. Is, a, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of OCD people who are like, I love this man. Yeah, right. <laughs> he procrastinates by doing all the things I adore. Right, right, and um, yeah. Actually, I just directed somebody I taught in their demo yesterday, and they referred to themselves as a stress baker. <laughs> and she had brought cookies to the studio. I love it. That was so sweet. But yeah, everybody can you know has has their thing. Oh, totally. But I yeah, but also this this makes me want to ask, and of course you're under no obligation to answer. Mm-hmm. You were doing the voices of so many beloved animation characters in New York. You were directing show the the best shows, the most important shows four kids had. Right. Many people would consider that a pinnacle, and yet, in in this pledge to yourself regarding your creativity, for you that wasn't fulfilling. That. No, no, and Is, and right, and right. and I mean, that's pretty much a my my second temptress. Um, right. Was money. Yeah, was money uh, because I had, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, my wife and and two kids that I was taking care of. Um, my, yeah, my my this is my ex wife now. Um, she, you know, was self employed, but it wasn't like you know what she was doing was making a huge difference financially. But she was you know very talented at what she did. Um, but 
the burden was on me. And so my drive was how many things can I do to make money so that my family never wants for something that they can't have? Um, I felt it was my responsibility right. to take care of everybody all the time. Um, you know, and and that also the, the, the downside of that was I never saw them. Not because I was working so much, yeah. Um, yeah. which became an epiphany of like that I need to change what I'm doing. Um, but yes, I, yes, being the senior voice director there for so many years and I love directing. It's definitely something that I, I enjoy. I, I, I like to You're bake. very good at it. Thank you. Thank you. I love to bake the cake um, I, in terms of, of putting the production together. That's very satisfying to me to, to take all these elements and say, well, how can I make this work as, as one cohesive package? Um, mm-hmm. Also running around New York City in between those sessions uh, to auditions or, you know, I worked for the, th- for the Letterman show. I was doing stuff a couple of times a week for them. And I mean, nonstop. I mean, I was racing down the streets and literally running down the streets so that I could get to appointments and then get back to directing or working on the cartoons as an actor. And yes, I enjoyed being a, a, a director and a voice actor in New York City. And and I will say I was I was very successful doing that, and both um, creatively in terms of the characters I played. I love those characters. And also financially. Yeah. I mean, I, I was on staff yeah. uh, as, a, as, as a director, so I was getting that. And then I was, uh, you know, a pretty well-known yeah. voice actor in New York City, so I was doing that. And then the cartoon voices as well. So, yeah, I mean, we were not hurting, which was, uh, which was a miracle as, a, as an actor. Um, oh, absolutely. But, yes, I was neglecting everything else that right. that defined who I really was, and right. um, I think we might have mentioned this in an early in an earlier show, but but the short version of of recapping that was, I used to sneak downstairs into the basement, which was tiny in my little house in Brooklyn, um, and sit on the washer dryer and and practice and write at night so that I wouldn't wake up the kids sleeping in the house. Um, and because I would get home so late, they'd already be in bed and it'd be like 10 o'clock at night when I would, when I, I felt creativity and I would go down there and it literally was a staircase down to probably a 10 by 12 dugout dirt floor basement with a washer dryer and a little bit of storage down there. Tiny. So, I I mean, it looked like I was hiding from, you know, people hunting me down. Right. It was (laughs) I mean, it really was it was ridiculous. Um, And 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 uh, my wife at the time, Jenna, came downstairs and said to me, this is absolutely ridiculous. You work so hard. You own this amazing house. And for you to do what you love to do, you have to come down here and sit on this washer dryer and write songs. This is absolutely ridiculous. Like, you need to, to come up with a change. Um, I mean, that was a, a very uh, uh, nice thing for her to say to me, uh, to recognize yeah. that. But yes, the temptress was work, m- work, make money, make money. Um, and not for any other reason than because of the responsibilities I had. I, I didn't to care. To provide for your stupid family. I know, right? What kidding. a selfish, ridiculous... <laughs> I, 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 you know, but yes, I, it wasn't like I needed a fancy car or I wanted to, you know, be, 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 you know have the, the, the fancy clothes. If anyone knows me, I wear the same outfit right. all the time. You know, like I, I have 10 of the same shirts and the jeans and my, my multiple hats all look the same. I mean, I'm a man of, of a continuity. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I, that, I would definitely consider that um that as my temptress i i really wanted to work all the time and the shift down to nashville walking away from that was Mm -hmm. scary but it was all i mean i you you know from our conversations outside of the podcast like i am happy like it's it's a different environment and it's not it shows and thank you and it's not as stable but in terms of life like my goodness what a what a better uh, balance you know i can still be successful financially but that is not driving me every day like 
wh- how am I going to get this? G-? I mean, to be quite honest with you, I turn Please. I turn down auditions sometimes. I don't do them. Sure. I sure. Like I even because even sometimes what the job is going to be is something that I don't want to spend my time doing. I know that sounds right. really like a diva, but it's because my goodness, if I book this project, do I really want to be doing this thing for three weeks or a month? I I don't. That would be a distraction. That would take me away right. from. Right. You know, I said to someone the other day, I like to think of myself as a <clears throat> as a, a voiceover cheetah. I <laughs> I I want to I want to do I want to do the job. The fat, fast and good <laughs> and move on to something else. I don't want to run the marathon. I want to be like, boom, got that done. Boom, got that. Wow, he's fantastic. And move on to the next thing. Uh, that's that's how I want to be uh, considered the voiceover cheetah. <laughs> that's a great goal. Thank you. That's a great goal. Explains why you might be hiding from hunters in a basement. There too. you go. Here's some it learned all, skills. Full circle. <laughs> and what about you? Did you Do you have a... A second one. I do, but I think before we do that, yes, uh, maybe we should check in with our wizardly friend Tips and Tricks oh. to see if he has anything to say that might be helpful about these sorts of things. I think that's a great idea. Welcome to Wizardly Words of Wisdom. I am your host, Tips and Tricks. And I was trying to have a conversation the other day with one of my sons, but he was perpetually distracted by his uh, smartphone, yes. Well, he asked if I was perturbed because he'd been tweeting so much. And I said, my boy, if you haven't gone to the trouble of transforming into a bird, why bother tweeting? I don't know about that. But I do know a thing or two about staying focused. First... Eliminate distractions. They can be nearly anything, including your social media. Put your phone in a place where it cannot pull your attention away and have a space and a time to call your own. Number two, don't multitask. Yes, it feels like we're accomplishing more, but we're really only doing more less well. Being able to pay attention to one thing is a refined skill. And thirdly and finally... Take short breaks. Yes, that may seem counterintuitive, but if you find yourself in a rut, step away from the work for just a moment. Allow your mind to refresh itself so that you may redouble your efforts. And finally and thirdly, oh, you know, I can't help but think I wouldn't make these mistakes if I retained more focus. But I'll give you one more, just because I like you. Sleep and eat well. Your body needs energy, and your mind is a part of your body. And that's where all the focusing happens. So make sure you're maintaining a good level of energy. Speaking of energy, I'm going to transform into some. That's all I have for you for now. But I'll look forward to the next time I can share with you some wizardly words of wisdom. Well, once again, some uh, some great uh, advice from our friend there with his uh, wizardly words of wisdom. Um, I'm going to ask him next time the best containers to use to organize my spices. <laughs> <laughs> he'll have an answer. I know he will. I don't know if you'll want to use it. No. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking maybe if if Tips has a friend oh. that could help. Yeah, that's probably uh, a good. With, we should find out. I'm sure he doesn't live yeah, alone. Yeah, the, the greater world uh, of of tip centrics and yeah, we should dive uh, deeper he could into help that. Bring into the conversation. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, I was I was asking you about your 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 second example of a temptress, if you had one. Yes. So, um, it relates a lot to what you were just talking about in terms of meeting the responsibilities of your life. Mm-hmm. There are fundamental things that we have to address, where we're going to sleep, how we're going to eat, all that stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so your temptress of money was satisfying that obligation in your life, which was a very normal, understandable, some might argue even primal thing that you had to do. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I think that temptress can can be generalized beyond money. Money was a utility which provided you a security. Yes. In in that example, right? So that 
need to to make reasonable choices is something that you need to have in your life or you might end up in some really precarious positions. But it's dangerous if that becomes limiting to your experience of life. So being safe has stability, but you may never experience joy. Very true. Whereas, Very true. Right. If you walk the other side of that, you will have joy and instability. But um, to borrow a phrase from the Buddhists, life is suffering. So, you know, choose your flavor. <laughs> which, which, you, yeah. which one would you prefer? <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's a bit of a simplification. But I was thinking about something Veronica mentioned in her interview with us, following the path of the actor without even questioning it until after she graduated from her master's degree. Right, right, right. right. That's later on in life. So it was never something that she was consciously debating another option, you know, against. And I thought about how when I was growing up, there were no actors in my family. She came from a family of actors. Mm -hmm. And the presumption of what anybody in my family might do for a career never had involved the arts before. You, your mother, uh, a dancer. Right. My my wife's uh, father sang, but her grandfather actually wrote some songs and toured with some bands and had something of a of a career as as a musician. And my wife was also a wonderfully talented singer songwriter. Very talented. So yeah, and uh, the 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 lineage, and which is more than just you know the person who's doing it, but that existence within the family Mm -hmm. that area was was defined for both you and michael and and i was more of um outlier but i was also supported but when it came to making reasonable choices for my life i thought for sure that acting was what i should do but probably unreasonable that it would be met with resistance that i needed to have something else more predictable, expectable, commonplace, probably would have had to do with history or psychology or writing or something in there. Um, And that probably would have been very gratifying to do on certain levels. I like all of those things. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's very easy to listen to the voice of temptation that's not tempting you with some carnal pleasure, but rather... Uh, uh, the promise of security, the promise of predictability, right? Which is a very seductive thing in and of itself. Now, I think I can say that I've pretty successfully resisted being conventional in a lot of ways, and some of them are not choices that you 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 make. Some right. some people are just unconventional. Well, when you were when you when were I, younger, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but when you were younger, yeah. did, did did what types of jobs did you have as a like a teenager? Some mowing lawns, some delivery newspapers, right? Stuff like that. Um, uh, I, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering, like, so, so you had a taste of sort of the norm, like the, you know, like a to a degree, yeah, yeah right. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you ever work in any other industry? One of my favorite jobs. It was what I would consider my first job, job, like where. I can't believe I've never asked you this question. I can't believe after no, that's the, okay. I, no, but the friendship that we've had for so many years, I can't believe I've never asked you if you've been anything else. Right, because you've mentioned your early background. Yeah, but I've never. I, that, I, yeah, yeah, I, I apologize yeah. to never have asked you this question because I'm very curious. Uh, I I am so insulted <laughs> that I don't even care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Well. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> I'm not offended. Okay. Uh, so, this is one of my favorite memories in my life. So. My first, what I would consider real job, apart from mowing lawns mm-hmm. here and there and, you know, delivering newspapers, I had to go somewhere and had a, you know, a boss directly over me mm-hmm. and, you know, that's a different experience. And I got a job with the landscaping department. That's probably not the right name for them. And uh, for Rutgers University. Oh, cool. So Rutgers has many campuses. They actually, I think, have the second largest bus fleet in New Jersey because they have to bus their students around Mm -hmm. to all these different campuses, and Rutgers is certainly not a small school. Anyway, there's lots of grounds that need to be kept up. 
And if you've never had the pleasure of weed whacking and trimming and, and making a lawn and area, you know, just, just better, mm-hmm. like this would really appeal to your OCD side. Oh, I know. I know. It's a, it's a fantastic meditation. It is. And it's, it's directly gratifying work. You see the results of your efforts. There's no ambiguity about it. Mm-hmm. And you're expressing it over a large area. Yeah. And, and I could do a lot of that work while listening to music, mm-hmm. right? You have your ear protection, and then underneath that, you have your headphones. Right, and right. I wasn't being sneaky. Nobody minded. Right. It was all, you know, that was fine. Because you're off doing that for like an hour at a time or whatever, mm-hmm. or more. And uh, yeah, that was, that was really gratifying. And, and it was also gratifying because we put in this walkway and which required moving a lot of earth and digging up stuff and wheelbarrows and and sh- shaping some ground around it. And there were timbers that made the pathway cut through this this mound in the center of a compound. It was, it, you know, you had you could put your back into it. Sure, sure. And there, that's also gratifying when you feel yourself, you know, you know working working hard. Yes. So, but um, no, that's great. Anyway. And, and yes, and and uh, you know, I I definitely mowed lawns and drove tractors and stuff like that. Um, you know, at the tennis club where I where I grew up working, um, we would have to yeah. sweep the courts with a with a with a tractor pulling a broom, and then go and uh-huh. and, and then dust off the lines. And yeah. the pattern that you used that, that you drove the tractor was <laughs> oh, was imagine. it really really worked well with my OCD of, of like you know you know how you know how can I do this with the least amount of turns and all of this sort of stuff and get it done and um, yeah so I can understand I did some landscaping too so I I, I understand how that can be very therapeutic <laughs> but that <laughs> but that's interesting so but but both your parents were were in education so there was Correct. there was a lot of um, that would have been an easy. Well, the next job I, uh, the yeah. job I had the next summer was teaching. Right. So, so being that, having yeah. that as an influence of like, oh, an example of the, the, I could always do this, and of course you teach now with your with your voiceover training. Right. Um, but it it is interesting that you grew up in a family that didn't have those performers. Um, right. But you, it would have been so easy for me to not have. Yeah. Not, not taken that risk at all. At all. Yeah, because yeah. and also where you grew up, we're not talking about the center of the theater community. Not that there's not not theater. in Indiana. No, but by the time we mom and I had moved to New Jersey. Yes, yes. I mean I was so lucky that Rutgers was a very good school for acting at the time. I think it still is. And you mentioned uh, how that move yeah. was so traumatic, but you also can thank ended that, up in a place that was yeah. You can totally thank better. that move yeah. for putting you in a place yes. that you could pursue what you are. Yes. Which is which also another thing that I became after moving to to New Jersey um, because of the the breakdown of, of demographically at my school at the high school I became an honorary Jew I attended so many seders <laughs> welcome welcome and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was awesome though yeah yeah well the, I, they, they were kind of impressed that the that the the Christian or Humorously, the the, the goy. Yes, yes, right? yes. Uh, actually, knew about the Old Testament. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, we, that part's. Uh, yeah, we share that part. I'll have to but, remember um, to invite you over for Passover. <laughs> for sure, I'm there. See, we, we're going to be trading meals again. That's there you go. Absolutely, <laughs> there you go. Well, no, that's that, um, so 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 you so you make this so you you um you make this decision to not follow into safety and 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 stability. Yet you are a very yeah, stable like, per but explain more about like that that challenge. Well, interesting that you were about to use the word stable. I don't know that I really can claim I heroically made that choice because I'd been struggling so much with depression and I think I mentioned in an, on an earlier episode that of, of all the things that I was doing to screw up my life, not doing my homework mm-hmm. and I wasn't hurting people or myself, but Clearly, I was creating roadblocks, shall we say. Right. And uh, I only got my act together for doing a show. So to me, it became clear that was really the only thing that I I got myself in gear for. Uh, I don't know if that's a courageous choice or simply calling things for what they are. And I could have, though, 
not pursued that. I could have not said I'm thinking about doing this to the head of the, the drama department who was so influential in my life right. at, in my high school years. Well, I mean, do you think if it's not a do you think if it's still not heroic if it's not a conscious choice? I I, I mean, do you have I, do you have to I, do you have to be aware for it to to be able to compl- to to uh, Yeah, that's a great question. Right? That's because a great question. I don't I I disagree with that. I think you made this I mean, your your soul made this choice. You right. you followed right. who you are. And I don't think at that age you were thinking, I know I, you know, maybe I should be, uh, you know, a teacher or a doctor or, or follow this because this is not going to be a stable choice. I, I can't imagine that you were consciously thinking that way. Right. But right. you also was... were not consciously thinking, all right, I'm going to, you know, go against the grain and and. <laughs> put my head down and do this because this is going to be my career path. I just think that, you know, there's there's learning an ability like how to to train uh, in your whatever craft you're in. But there's also yeah. there's also, I believe, what you are born with. I do believe it. It's, there are things that some talents that you are just born with. And maybe. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so this was what you were born with. Um, you were born with the with the with the ability to act and uh, that's your stability. Like that's your mental stability. As much as it's a crazy <laughs> roller coaster ride, that's really your stability. Because if you were not doing that, you would be a mess. Mm-hmm. You would be a mess. It's true. If I didn't perform in any way, I would be a mess. Mm-hmm. I would be. I know I would. Uh, I know I would be. Yeah. 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 And that's not to say that every show I've done back when I used to do theater was. A constant experience of joy and, mm-hmm. you know, having blissful, right, uh, uninterrupted experiences night after night. Of course not. Living what you tr- believe to be true to yourself, though, is 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 like nourishment. It's, it's, it's like oxygen. It's essential to your sense of feeling alive. Mm-hmm. And even uh, in the not so great examples, you're still you're still having some of that that breath and and and. Uh, there's this term I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, but have you heard the term showmance? No. <laughs> okay, so this is a term to describe a phenomena when actors are doing shows, and very often you're doing a show like that's out of town, mm-hmm. right? You're doing it at some other theater somewhere across the country. So everyone's from somewhere else. You're all a part of that collective experience. And you're you're living the best part of your life. You're not doing your day job. Right. 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 You're, you've been your talent has been validated. You have a job. You're going to be doing a show. So you feel at your best in a lot of ways. And that has contributed to a lot of showmances, which is when people romantically hook up. And oh, yes. Decide to become married or <laughs> whatever. I like it. I like and, it. As much as there may be, you know, attraction and all of that involved, there's a healthy dose of that other almost pheromone of <laughs> being in your element. And, you know. Sure. Yeah. If you're doing something with that you love with other people who are doing what they love, um, yeah. you know, that's definitely an attractive uh, thing. It's an attractive. Talent is an aphrodisiac. Yeah. It's a great environment sure. to be in. So I could, I could definitely yeah. see that occurring. Uh, but that's a great yeah. that's a great phrase. <laughs> <laughs> that, does, that doesn't necessarily. I don't know if that really aligns with our, the the uh, temptress idea, but but it's uh, yeah, it could still it's work. Funny. Uh, I, it's I, funny. Uh, I I uh, I had uh, just one follow up to to your yeah, example. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Do you have another? Well, one? I was yeah. going to I was going to say in in terms of the uh, the the temptress of being of that stability or 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 have you ever thought about doing something else? Since you've made this decision so early on oh. in your life, like have you ever said, "I'm done with this. Um, I'm going to yeah. do this because it's yeah. just easy. It's going to be easier, or it's going to be, you know, I, I'm I'm just exhausted, you know, chasing after the other stuff." Like, ha- has that ever crossed your mind? Uh, yes, it has. And one version of that is making the shift from doing theater to doing voiceover. Mm-hmm. Not that I regret that choice. Um, but um, that that was giving up one thing for another, and that decision largely being made 
by what was a more comfortable life. Mm. But what I wasn't sacrificing, which I'm very grateful for, was the chance to be active and engaged as an actor. Sure. As an, as an interpreter of characters, as a storyteller. Yeah, well, you moved horizontally. I guess you could say that, yeah. Yeah, and in many ways, there's lots more to be grateful for having made that shift. So, mm-hmm. um, And you're good at both. But, of, and you're good at both. Well, things. thank you. You are. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I would say, though, that I have always wanted to be a comic book artist, writer, right? Or even as an actor, I wanted to be an actor, yeah, but I also wanted to write the story and be the director to to make the whole cake, to trade off of one of your terms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so... I could imagine being happy in my life, never taking the stage again, although I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. I could imagine my creativity finding different veins to go through. Sure. But I don't think I, to me, it's all been a part of this grander experience. And some of these things I'm better at than others, obviously. So, yeah, but I've never felt like I'm going to hang it up and just be uncreative. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, no, I've never had that. I mean, if you said to me, you know what, I'm done with all this, I'm going to go do X, I'd be like, uh, who are you, and what did you do with, with right. Dan Green? <laughs> uh, I'm going to get into realty. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and for me, I mean, uh, it's been a very, very long time since I have uh, worked for someone besides myself. As as a yeah. as a as a supervisor or, or as a boss, um, I've never been um, tempted to do something else. It's actually interesting. I I remember when I when I first moved down here and I was uh, here yeah. meeting Nashville and I was trying to figure out okay, well I'm going to be doing the music and doing some other stuff remotely, but I I really maybe I should like you know try to do some some more directing with like an advertising agency or something like that. And I started to put together my resume and I'm reading my resume and I'm like, wow, this is really impressive for like. A very specific skill set. <laughs> like, like I'm impressed, but I don't know if anyone is really going to understand what it is I do. <laughs> right. And, you know? right, right, right. <laughs> so I think that I think that that ship has sailed in terms of well, you know, maybe you could get. Um, you know, I remember going through a really a tough time, especially uh, um, right after my divorce of uh, just financially yeah. and trying to figure out, you know, where I was going to live and all of that. Um, yeah. And someone said to me, well, why don't you just get a, you know, you could get a job at like, you know, Home Depot and there's nothing wrong with getting a job at Home Depot. But I'm like, I don't even think they would hire me because they would read my resume and say, yeah. oh, we don't even know what to do with you. Yeah. You have no transferable skills. apparently. Yeah, right. Right. So, uh, yeah. So that, that was, uh, that was never an option. Not that I, was ever looking for one, but um, I, also, right, right. I also don't think I have too many choices. Right. Well, that mirrors me pondering what's college going to be. Mm. I didn't really have my grades were horrible. Mm. I mean, Mine I too. damaged my academic record so harshly. Yeah. But whatever these temptations are, I think you and I are lucky or feel grateful for having a clear sense of what our calling is, what it is we feel like we should be doing. That very first episode, The Call to Adventure, I think we know what that call sounds like. Yes. So we're we're aware of what those distractions or those divergent things are because we have a clear idea of, you know, where what it is we're going for. Don't you think? Yeah, and I think, you know, I think people listening to this, um, hearing our, our journey, um, these things that tempt you or distract you um you know they're not they're not negatives um if you're, exactly if you're trying to um yeah. follow a career path or and and ne- you don't necessarily know where that path or which path you're going to end up uh going along i mean right you know i i started off as you know trying to be just you know just play music and it turned into a voiceover career um and that's great. It's great that that sort of came together that way. But, you know, it, it, 
was that a distraction that I wanted to get a job in a recording studio? Um, no, it was part of this <laughs> other plan, but then it led to something else. So, so these distractions and, and temptations can also uh, be a positive later on. But um, For sure. hopefully someone listening to this will also see if they are filled with all of this stuff going on, this, this whirlwind of stuff, that um, that's not a bad thing. That's not a right. bad thing. It's better than just sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's a normal thing, too. Yes, yes. Very yeah. normal. Yeah. And also in the temptations are not necessarily bad category, of course you should have fun with your life. Of yes. course you should have time where you're not on mission, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, I just took my first vacation in five years. <laughs> well, wow. Okay, well... Uh, clearly, you you deserve it. I, I, thank I hope you. it was it was rewarding for yes, sure. Thank you. And we hope that you've felt that this time has been rewarding. And we are always grateful to have you along in this conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. Till next time. Thanks for listening to the Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice.